welcome to another session of hardwood engineering from this session we will be beginning with chapter number 3 that is natural phenomena so let's begin with this new chapter in this chapter basically we are going to study four natural phenomena that is wind waves tides and currents these are the four main concepts which we will be studying and what are their effects so let's begin first of all with the wind. Wind as we already know is air in motion and basically created due to the pressure difference. So horizontal movement of air due to pressure difference in air caused due to the temperature difference that is due to the variation in temperature, certain specific point of high temperature, another point of low temperature which creates imbalance which creates difference in air pressure and basically a gradient is created to create the balance between the uh, zones with different pressure and that creates the movement of air which is wind. The wind includes three characteristics which we will be studying that is the direction, what is the specific direction of wind, what is the duration or the frequency of the specific wind and what is its speed or intensity. So these are the three important parameters. Next is the wind rose diagram. Now here uh, there is only briefing regarding this topic but in the airport portion that is in runway design chapter 3 of airport engineering we will be studying in detail the wind rose diagram along with its two types. So here uh, we will be studying only uh, in short as to what is a wind rose diagram. So all the three parameters which I told in the previous slide have been represented here. So firstly is the direction that is if the radial lines are the direction which have been shown. Next are the concentric circles and the irregular circles as we can see. So first of all the irregular lines are represent, representing the intensity or the speed of the wind. So this 2 km per hour 10, 20, 30 the irregular lines are representing the intensity or the speed of the wind and the concentric circles are representing the duration or the frequency. So this 20, 16, 12, 8 and 4 percentage these are the concentric circles which are representing the duration or the frequency of wind. Now among the three parameters we are aware about the direction and we are aware about the intensity or speed. The new thing is the duration of frequency which is being given in the percentage. So what does it represent? Say for example if uh, the duration is 4 percentage then it represents that a wind of specific x direction of specific y intensity or speed is flowing in a full year or 4 percentage of duration. So that percentage is representation of the data of one full year and say for example if there is a wind with of x direction of specific y intensity and if it has 4 percent duration then in a whole year it is flowing for 4 percentage of time. So duration is not in second or in hour or days or weeks or months it is indicated in percentage. Say for example if we talk about point A. Now point A represents the wind which is flowing from southeast direction which has speed or intensity of 10 km per hour that is the irregular line and it has duration of 8 percentage. So these are the three data that is duration of 8 percentage concentric circle irregular line speed of 10 km per hour and the radial line that is the direction of south east. Next in center is the calm period, calm period basically indicates that duration when the intensity of the wind is very less. So uh, it basically has no effect, we will be learning about that calm period in detail in airport engineering and runway design. But as for now calm period is that period during which the intensity of wind is very less and it has no effect on any operation. So this is related to the various aspects of the wind and the main three parameters. Next, waves is generated by transfer of energy from air moving over water surface. So the basic cause of generation of waves is the moving air that is the wind which transfers the energy and creates the undulation on the surface. 
So that is undulation or irregularity on the sea surface causes first and foremost is the wind which will create that undulation and it is waves is basically pertaining or related to the movement on the surface itself. Devolution of earth and also earthquake are the causes that is due to that due to revolution and the specific movement and the earthquake that is the collision of the tectonic plates also waves are generated. Next are the characteristics of waves. So these are the various components or parameters pertaining to waves. First is the crest which we already know is the topmost point of the wave. Next is trough which is the bottommost point of the wave. Capital L is the wavelength which is the distance between two consecutive crest that is two consecutive topmost point. Capital H is the height which is the elevation difference between crest and trough that is the topmost point and the bottommost point. Bottom that is the C bed. So these are the basic terminologies. Crest highest point of wave, trough lowest point of wave, wavelength distance between two successive or consecutive crest, height vertical distance from crest to trough. So these four labels we have already seen. Wave period is time taken to travel a distance of one wave length. That is the time taken to travel between two successive or consecutive crest. Wave frequency that is the reciprocal of wave period. We know that small r is equal to 1 by capital T. So that is the inverse of wave period. Next is fetch which is a straight line stretch of open water available for wave growth without interruption of length. So it is basically the distance up to which the wave can propagate. It can grow without any interruption of length. Next are the types of sea waves. These are the basically various types. First is the deep sea waves uh, in which the height that is the elevation difference between crest and trough is more than half of the wave length that is the horizontal distance between two successive crest. Next are the shallow sea waves where the height is less than the half of the wave length. Oscillatory waves and translatory waves. Oscillatory waves are those waves which sort of have a very minimum uh, movement and translatory waves are those which consist of motion which propagate to a longer distance. So if I give an example say for example if we talk about pendulum then in pendulum it is a oscillatory motion so basically that range of movement is fixed so that is the case with the oscillatory waves that is it only has a motion or movement or a specific range, a minimal distance, while the translatory waves are those which propagate to a longer distance. And next are surfs, uh, which are, we have studied in the beach profile, that is the surf zone. Basically, the waves which have low height and the which length is more as compared to height on which uh, the surfing can be done. Next topic is wave reflection. Now, this word we have already come across while we have discussed the vertical wall type breakwater. So that is the same topic. Waves acting on a vertical wall such as breakwater do not lose their energy but are reflected. We have studied the reason for this. That is if a vertical wall is constructed as it does not have any voids or any gap present. So the water cannot seep through it and due to that the water cannot collide. It cannot release the energy. So the dissipation of energy does not take place but the wave energy gets reflected. So repeating again. Vertical wall is constructed, it does not have any gap or voids, so the water cannot pass through it, cannot seep through it, the water energy cannot collide, so as it cannot collide, it cannot be released and basically here the wave energy uh, is just getting reflected without any dissipation of energy which happens in the case of rebel mount type break water. So the wave incident on a vertical barrier are reflected, that is the wave which are incident on the vertical wall missionary construction are reflected back. Due to continuous interaction of incident and reflected wave, now the two waves that are the incident wave which is first of all moving towards the wall and second is the reflected wave which moves from the wall towards the water body. So the incident wave and the reflected wave, one is incident on the wall 
in the lake. Next is generated from the wall towards the water body. A wave of higher height is formed, which is called a standing wave. That is due to the continuous interaction of the incident wave and reflected wave. That continuous movement takes place, and uh, a standing wave is generated due to this continuous interaction, which is of a height which is twice as that of the incident wave. So the standing wave may reach a height of twice the incident wave. The reason is that due to the continuous process, the waves sort of accumulate one above the other. They amalgamate, and due to that accumulation, a uh, wave of height twice as that of the incident wave is generated which is termed as standing wave. It is not desirable to allow wave reflection inside the harbour. Why? Because it might create problem while the operation are being carried out in the harbour. So we have to make sure that the wall is not constructed in such a manner that wave after reflection is moving towards the harbour. Breakwater must be aligned such that the waves reflected from them are not directed towards the harbour structure because if the reflected wave move towards the harbour then they will create a problem at the time of operation. Next is the wave breaking. Now wave breaking or the breakers also is a point which we have come across in the beach profile. Basically the waves which are of high energy uh, and also the amplitude that is the they have a very significant height. So waves break when forward velocity of the crest particle exceeds velocity of the wave propagation itself. Now what happens here is that due to reaching the critical point, the waves have reached the critical point due to which they have high energy and also the height of the wave is more. The crest portion that is the topmost point propagates ahead of the wave itself that is due to reaching the critical point due to the high energy the crest that is the topmost point propagates a bit further than the wave itself. Occurs when the wave height exceeds one seventh of the wavelength. That is when the height is more than one seventh of the total wavelength. That is the distance between two consecutive crests. These waves of critical energy, that is high energy and of significant height, that is which have reached the amplitude, they have are caused. So that's it for this session. In this session, we have begun with chapter number three. And we have covered uh, wind and waves. In the next session, we will be learning about tides and currents.